Hi and welcome to tutorial 27 in this series of TradeStation Easy Language tutorials designed to help you learn TradeStation Easy Language. And in this one, I'm going to be creating a new version of the pivot function and the difference we will see by example. So let's zoom in and you'll see here the blue dot represents the markplex pivot and the red dot is the traditional TradeStation pivot function. So for a pivot to qualify as a blue pivot, and let's just assume a left strength of three, or let's just, no, let's just assume a left strength of two and a right strength of two for the purpose of this explanation. In order for it to be a markplex pivot, and we'll also assume that we're looking for the pivot lows, so uh, just to clarify that. The low of this bar has to be greater than the low of this bar, and the low of this bar has to be greater than the low of this bar. And then the low of this bar has to be greater than the low of this bar, and the low of this bar has to be greater than the low of this bar. So that is a markplex function, which um, is also in that that case a trade station pivot. But let's just look here at an example of a uh, one of the pivots found by the. Oh, let's go out again there. Well, I think you can probably see it without zooming in. But this is one found by the trade station function, and you can see that while the low of this bar is greater than the low of this bar, the low of this bar is not greater than the low of this bar, so that does not qualify as a markplex pivot. So let's have a look at the function. Okay, so let's go into the function itself and if you look at the top here, you'll see that the inputs are exactly the same as the TradeStation pivot function inputs, but the rest of the program is pretty different. What we assume is that each bar as we look at it is a possible pivot, and we set it to be true, and it's, it's innocent until proven otherwise in this case. So, And what we do is we go through the bars, and we're looking back a certain length. So this is somewhat complicated to explain and you may need to actually open the code and just play around with it and maybe print off a few things but if we're looking for a high low is minus one which means we're looking for a low pivot what we do to the right of the potential pivot we go through the bars and we just make sure that in each case the uh, the bar of the more recent one is actually greater than the uh, the price of the one before it until we get to the potential pivot itself. So let me just explain that on the chart. That's it. This is what this little part of the program is doing here. And um, what we're doing is we're going through and I'm just going to zoom in so we can see. And we're saying, so let's just assume for the sake of argument that this is a right strength of two, left strength of two, as I said before. What we're making sure is that that is higher than that and that is higher than that. Then if that uh, is true, then we continue with the function. If it's not, we say the potential pivot is equal to false, as, as we see there. But then what we do is we go to the left of the actual pivot and we follow through the following logic. We say that the low of this has got to be less than this, the low of this has got to be less than, and less than this. And if all those uh, tests become true, then we know that in this particular case, the possible pivot is confirmed and we then set the price of the pivot and the pivot bar and just to make the program slightly more complicated we we have to actually look back a length and so that is why we've wrapped this in another while function where we're actually using this thing called the offset counter to keep looking back within the length until we find pivots. And then one slight further complexity is we have this thing called instance. And that means that one means the most recent pivot, two is the next most recent. So for example, if we were looking just for the most recent, then uh, the pivot number, as soon as it gets to one, then we, we stop. If however, we're looking for the second instance then we would find the first one the pivot number would be equal to one then we just go through this again to find the next pivot until we get to an instance of two or rather I should say until the pivot number equals the instance number which is an input which equals two. 
So in order to test this function I created a very simple little uh, indicator called test4 and uh, all I've done is put in the uh, markplex pivot and put in uh, various inputs which are reflected up here and then using exactly the same inputs I've also created using the trade station pivot function. The only difference being, well, in fact, to indicate that there is a pivot, I've just drawn a little asterisk using text new. Uh, I do exactly the same for the trade station pivot, with the difference that I put it a little bit lower. You just This is on a, a uh, pound dollar chart, so I've just put it 0 0.01 below the the low of the pivot bar. And I've also changed the color to red, whereas this one's just using the default color. So anyway, I um, hope you find that's useful. If you spot any bugs in the program then please go to markplex.com and let me know and um, thank you very much for your attention.